Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, we'll be taking a look at the fallacies of distributed computing, and this becomes very important, especially as we start to move towards the trend of distributed architectures like service-based architecture and also microservices. As a matter of fact, uh, Peter Deutsch, while at Sun Microsystems, had identified eight fallacies of distributed computing, and these are assumptions that both programmers, developers, and architects make with regards to distributed programming and distributed architecture. When we move uh, from our monoliths, for example, over to microservices or service-based architecture and start breaking apart our monoliths, necessarily we're moving into a distributed architecture. And so it's important to understand these fallacies. And let's take a look at each, all eight of these. Uh, the first fallacy of distributed computing is the assumption we make that the network is, in fact, reliable, and that we don't have to worry about network issues. And, of course, nothing could be further from the tr truth. Now, networks are uh, more reliable than they were before, but they're still not fully reliable. So we sometimes have trouble reaching a particular microservice, or once we've reached that microservice, we're not getting a response back. It could be due to an error in that service itself, or it could be due to a network failure. Fallacy number two is one of my favorites. I've got a couple of favorites in here, but let me show you. Uh, uh, this is my uh, second favorite. Um, latency is zero. You know, when we make a local memory call, that is just to instantiate an object and invoke its method, uh, there is time spent on that. Of course, it's in usually microseconds, um, almost non-measurable. Um, however, when we make that same call over some sort of remote access protocol, um, we have a no more time. In other words, latency, T remote. And the problem is math doesn't lie. That T remote will always be greater than T local, substantially greater. The question is, do you know what the latency is on a standard RESTful call in your environment? Because this is something you can't Google. And when we start breaking apart our applications into distributed architectures, we need to know these values. As a matter of fact, it's not only the average, but also the long tail. In other words, that 95th to 99 percentile that we also need to know because that will generally kill us. Number three, this is one of my favorites here. Bandwidth is infinite. And as a matter of fact, as we start breaking apart our applications, we start to realize that, oh, we've got plenty of bandwidth. The network's pretty fast. But as we start leveraging the network, on these inter-service calls, um, dozens to hundreds of inter-service calls uh, between services, we realize that we're passing a lot of data. And we don't think about that data that we're passing. And sure enough, we start slowing down the network because bandwidth is not, in fact, infinite. Number four is an assumption we make, of course, that the network is secure. Fallacy number four. And in fact, it is not. Just because we're, quote, behind the firewall does not mean we have a secure network. So I have really no idea who's calling me. And I don't want this bad client calling me either through an authorization or an authentication, which means we need to secure every endpoint to and from our services. Fallacy number five of distributed computing is the assumption we make that the network topology doesn't change. And of course it changes. As a matter of fact, it can change as frequently as our applications. And assumptions that we make in terms of the current switches, routers, load balancers, and network that we have, uh, if those change, it may impact some of our performance, some of our scalability, availability. So, so we, we can't make the assumption that the, the topology itself is frozen in time. Fallacy number six is the assumption we make that there's only one administrator, and that's the only person that we need to coordinate with for any changes or information about the network. And again, nothing could be further from the truth, especially global organizations, which have hundreds of network administrators spread across the entire globe. This makes communication really, really hard to not only communicate changes in networks to the application developer, 
developers and architects, but also vice versa, assumptions that we make or assertions that we make about the network. My third favorite fallacy is fallacy number seven, that the transport cost is zero. Now, that does not mean latency, but what it means is that we're starting to break apart our monolith and we start to create distributed architectures, let's say microservices or service-based architecture. And we say, well, just go ahead and make a RESTful call. I mean, how expensive can that be? Well, it's not about the latency here on this fallacy. What this is about is the network infrastructure, the hardware, the licensing, the products needed just to make a simple RESTful call. And the assumption that we make in distributed architectures is that, well, it's all there for us. And the fact is, costs will increase in your network and in your hardware when we start distributing applications. And that's what we call transport cost. The final fallacy, fallacy number eight, is the assumption we make that the network is also homogeneous, that it is all the same. And in fact, again, nothing could be further from the truth. There are all sorts of products and product companies and heterogeneous equipment and systems within the network. And so we can't make assumptions that we're always using Cisco or always using Barracuda or always using Juniper. In fact, the network is heterogeneous as well. Now, these eight fallacies are really important to take into account when breaking apart our monoliths or entering into a distributed architecture world. So this has been Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and please stay tuned next week for another architecture lesson. Thank you so much.